Yes, let's start with uh, the incident that happened yesterday. So yesterday, uh, Israel bombed a, um, a, a uh, I guess it was a, I'm not sure if it was a building or a, or a tent, uh, in which senior Hamas leaders were meeting. Uh, and this is, uh, the, the, there were uh, three in particular senior Hamas leaders, two of whom were um, in charge of Hamas operations, both in the West Bank and in Israel proper. So they were responsible for planning, funding, providing logistics for terrorist operations uh, initiated by Hamas in the West Bank and anywhere in, in, in Israel proper. Um, uh, senior, both very senior people, and then the third was another senior person who I guess had been released, who was serving a life sentence in Israeli jail, was released uh, during hostage negotiations with, uh, for Shalit, the soldier who was kidnapped years ago and for whom Israel released a thousand people. He had killed, uh, murdered two people, serving a life sentence and was released and in return to Hamas, returned to being a terrorist. Um, anyway, uh, uh, they, they had intelligence, they bombed it. Um, the bombing set off a fire, um, uh, and it's not clear who exactly was in the same facility as these three uh, Hamas leaders, but uh, the, the, the bottom line is it appears that something like 35 civilians died in the bombing with the Hamas, uh, at the same time as the Hamas leaders. And the world went apoplectic. I mean, civilians are dying in Gaza every day. Uh, 35 is not a necessarily high number. I mean, maybe, maybe it turns out that Israel's bombing over and over and over again for the last seven months are not killing civilians, and maybe that's why the world chose this to get pissed off at. Um, but uh, the reality is that, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Hamas operatives, Hamas leaders are surrounding themselves with civilians. Uh, and uh, and uh, Hamas, uh, and of course, uh, I, it's almost impossible in a dense area, and this is an area where there were a lot of tents, it's, it's, it's almost impossible in a dense area like that uh, to, um, to actually bomb it in a way that it has no impact on everybody else. So, of course, uh, some civilians are going to die. Uh, this is, of course, the nature of war, and uh, there's no way to sugarcoat it. There's no way to, to make it any different. Uh, this, is, this is the reality. But anyway, the world went apoplectic. I mean, uh, everybody, everybody condemned Israel. Israel went apoplectic. I mean, this is the thing about this ideology of altruism. It, it, Israel is not spared from it at all. So newspapers in Israel, how could Israel do this? What is going on? This has to stop, this has to end, and of course this is in Rafa. Somehow the American administration has conjured up this idea that Rafa is some separate entity, some different thing that, that different rules apply to. So it's in Rafa, so everybody says, oh, Israel has to stop the operation in Rafa, which means stop the operation in Gaza completely. Um, it's just bizarre. The whole thing is bizarre because, again, this is not the first time 35 civilians have died in one day. Um, in, uh, I assume, in, uh, in the Gaza, although, uh, again, most of the people dying in Israel's attacks are Hamas operatives. So maybe it was the ratio. Anyway, everybody went crazy. Israel said it's under investigation, uh, which they always say. And then Netanyahu came out and said, it's a tragic mistake. God. A tragic mistake would be not to kill the three Hamas operatives. A tra God. I mean, how, how can you take this man seriously? Um, on the one hand, he goes out and he says tough things about victory and necessity to win and to, and, to, and to completely destroy Hamas and to make it impossible for them to function and all of this. And you go, yeah, what a speech. And then he says something like this, a tragic mistake. There's nothing mistaken about this. This is a success. Three senior leaders of Hamas were killed. That is a win. The civilian casualties, whatever, however numbered they are, however many they are, the civilian casualties are a consequence of Hamas leaders hiding among civilians and a consequence of Hamas initiating a war. And in war, people die. And in war, civilians die. 
And in war, if you want to win, you don't do calculations about how many civilians might die in any given attack. You attack what is necessary to attack. You destroy what is necessary to destroy. You kill whoever is necessary to kill. That is war. You don't want, you're not willing to do that. Stay home. Stay home. The bad guys know this. Over the weekend, uh, uh, Russia bombed a mall in Kharkiv. Nobody complained about it. Uh, I mean, I mean, civilians died. Nobody cared. Israel is held to a standard no other country in the world is ever held to. And it is sick. It is sick. The only thing, only thing that should guide Israel's actions in Gaza, the only moral thing that should guide Israel's actions in Gaza is to achieve victory as quickly, as swiftly as possible while minimizing the casualties of its own soldiers. That is it. And to have any other goal, to have any other parameter is immoral, is self-sacrificial, it's placing the enemy above self. The enemy, and that's very Christian to do, but not very rational to do. All right, so that, that's a continuing story. It's going to develop. The, the world, again, is apoplectic. Who knows what will come of it? Who knows what commissions the I, ICJ or the ICC will continue to, uh, to persecute Israel and to go after them and to claim um, it, it, Israel's illegitimacy. It's the only country in the world that's not allowed to defend itself. Right. Also uh, in Rafa, uh, there was a shooting today, uh, a gun battle between Israeli soldiers and Egyptian soldiers on the border. It turns out that the Israelis were investigating a tunnel that goes under the Egyptian border. They, they encountered Egyptian soldiers in the tunnel. Uh, it's it not clear if those Egyptian soldiers were also just protecting the tunnel, protecting the Egyptian side of the tunnel, trying, uh, coming to meet up with the Hamas uh, pals, who knows what they were doing there, I don't know. But anyway, uh, uh, the Egyptians opened fire, it sounds like, on the Israelis. The Israelis uh, protected themselves all inside this tunnel. It landed up that Egypt, uh, one of Egy the Egyptian soldiers was killed and a number of them were wounded. Um, uh, it, it, no Israeli soldiers were harmed. Again, under investigation, nobody knows exactly what happened, who's at fault. But it does really suggest that uh, because now Israel occupies basically the border between um, Gaza and, uh, and uh, Egypt, that there are going to be many more opportunities for uh, conflict, for misunderstanding, for, uh, for you know, bad things to happen. Uh, and, uh, and, and this might not be the last uh, kind of um, conflict between Israel and Egypt. Uh, and uh, it, it's hard to tell kind of what the ramifications, the broader ramifications of that are. Egypt certainly doesn't want a war with Israel, and Israel certainly doesn't want a war with Egypt, so hopefully cool heads will prevail, and they'll figure out what exactly happened and prevent it from happening in the future. And it would be nice if Egypt knows that these tunnels exist, it would be nice if they helped Israel destroy them, rather than actually, it sounds like, protecting them and facilitating them and... Um, because uh, it, is, it is those tunnels is where the weapons were smuggled in. It's those tunnels that potentially could have provided an exit to uh, Hamas leadership and to hostages. Um, it, 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 those tunnels need to be destroyed, need to be destroyed. Hopefully that's happening. I, you know, I just don't know. Um, all right, uh, one other story related to, I guess a couple of stories related to uh, what is going on um, uh, in uh, Middle East. Uh, so, <laughs> so Biden, uh, the Biden administration is urging uh, allies of the United States, primarily uh, Europeans, uh, to ease, ease Iranian tensions, not, not to go too strong on Iran. Really, don't, don't, don't get too tough on them. Uh, you know, this as Iran has, by all measures, uh, significantly increased its stockpile of uranium enriched to near weapons grade level, reaching 142.1 kilograms, which is more than 30 times the limit 
set by the 2015 deal, that deal which, of course, Trump got out of uh, and Biden is trying to resurrect. Um, so while this is in allies not to do too much, not to put too much pressure on Iran, um, and uh, they're asking that if there's going to be any escalation, we wait until after the presidential election. We don't want Biden to be in this pickle of, of, of having to be tough on Iran while he's trying to get reelected. Something like that. Um, in the meantime, in the meantime, Iran is enriching uranium and uh, getting to the point where it wouldn't, be, wouldn't take much for them to flip a switch and convert it into uh, weapons grade. And given that they have the ballistic missiles, it wouldn't take much to flip a switch at that point and, uh, and have a nuclear weapon. So, uh, but don't worry, be happy because the Biden administration is on the case and uh, everything will be, will be hunky-dory, will be fine, will be really great. Uh, it, it really is um, uh, pretty amazing. Of course, um, somebody has to deal with this uranium enrichment. Uh, and uh, I, don't think, I don't think Israel's too busy, it appears. And it had an opportunity, didn't it, a few weeks ago? I, I called for a retaliation for the Iranian strike on Israel, B, the complete destruction of the nuclear facilities in Iran. Israel chose to do something symbolic, a stealth attack on some, uh, some uh, land to uh, uh, some air defense systems. That was the response. 300 missiles were lobbed and drones were lobbed in the direction of Israel. And they shot, I don't know, two missiles uh, and destroyed a, um, a, uh, a defense system. I, it, I, what do you say? What do you say about the weakness that that projects. What do you say about the weakness Biden projects when he tells the Europeans to lay off? Oh, uh, Germany uh, today was thinking about, uh, they're considering uh, declaring the, uh, the, the, the uh, Revolutionary Guard, uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, uh, to be a terrorist organization, uh, which would have all kinds of ramifications in terms of sanctions. And it, it sounds like the Biden administration says, ah, don't overdo it, you know, be calm until after the elections, whatever the hell that means. Hard to understand the world in which we live. It's a world of, I don't know, sellouts left and right. 